President Biden has now officially released his first campaign ad of 2024. And in that ad, President Biden makes clear what he believes will be the central issue of this election. I've made the preservation of American democracy the central issue of my presidency. I believe in free and fair elections and the right to vote fairly and have your vote counted. There's something dangerous happening in America. There's an extremist movement who does not share the basic beliefs in our democracy. All of us are being asked right now, what will we do to maintain our democracy? We are the United States of America. There is nothing beyond our capacity when we act together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. That's Joe Biden's campaign message this year, that Donald Trump and the movement he has encouraged are a threat to democracy. Tomorrow, the president's going to continue to push that message in a speech at Valley, Valley Forge, commemorating the three-year anniversary of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. And the message that President Biden will deliver there, while important, will not be new. Donald Trump's threats to democracy are well known. Americans saw it when Trump spent his presidency cozying up to dictators and shunning America's democratic allies. They saw it when Trump did everything in his power to try to overturn the results of a legitimate democratic election, culminating in a violent siege on our seat of government. They can see it now when Trump openly muses about the idea of being a dictator on day one, should he be reelected. But perhaps the biggest example of Donald Trump's threat to democracy is something that has essentially fallen off the radar. An active threat to democracy by Trump and many of his Republican allies that is so dire and so urgent that it could wipe a democratic nation off the face of the earth before we get to election day. It has been nearly two years since Russian dictator Vladimir Putin invaded the democratic nation of Ukraine. And in that time, against all odds, the Biden administration has managed to keep Russia, thought to have been one of the finest armies in the world, at bay. Joe Biden held together a fractured NATO alliance, fractured in large part by Donald Trump himself isolated Russia on the world stage and rallied military and financial support for the besieged nation of Ukraine. It was, by all appearances, a victory for the concept and the strength and durability of democracy, of democratic nations standing up to authoritarianism. And now that victory may be slipping away. Over the last few weeks, Ukraine has faced some of the heaviest attacks from Russia since the war began. Russia is once again firing missiles at Ukraine's two largest cities, Kyiv and Kharkiv. Russia has taken roughly 20 percent of Ukrainian territory while leaving entire towns destroyed in its wake. The fighting on the front lines of the war has become a bloody stalemate. Ukrainian society has become war weary become harder to find the Ukrainian troops to fight through the harsh winter months. And all of this, during all of this, Ukraine is literally begging for assistance from its Western allies. But thanks to Trump and Republican leaders in Congress, that assistance has almost stopped flowing. Just before the new year, the United States set up what could be its last package of military aid to Ukraine. The only way to get more aid to Ukraine now is for Congress to specifically authorize it. A message that the Biden administration has been hammering for weeks. Here was National Security Council spokesman John Kirby today. Here's the bottom line. The most effective response to Russia's horrific violence against the Ukrainian people is to continue to provide Ukraine with vital air defense capabilities and other types of military equipment. Ukrainians deserve to know that the American people and this government will continue to stand with them. So it's critical that Congress meets this moment and responds by providing Ukraine with what they need to defend themselves. The time for Congress to act is now. The time for Congress to act is now. But as the White House continues to hammer that message, congressional Republicans, once staunch allies of democracy and opponents of authoritarianism, have remained defiant. Yesterday, the House Speaker, Mike Johnson, held a press conference at the U.S. southern border where he said that Republicans will not pass any Ukraine aid package unless President Biden agrees to draconian new border restrictions. For weeks now, the Biden administration has signaled a willingness to compromise with Republicans on border policies, 
in order to get aid for Ukraine. So much so that some Democrats have raised concerns about how much Joe Biden is willing to trade away. But Republicans have rejected those compromises. Because for them, rejecting aid to Ukraine while hammering Biden on the border is itself a victory for their MAGA base. When asked about the prospects of a deal, the Republican Congressman Troy Nels told CNN yesterday, quote, I'm not willing to do too damn much right now to help a Democrat and to help Joe Biden's approval rating. Let's just understand that for a moment. Republicans are willing to let Ukraine a democratic country and a U.S. ally fall in order to keep Joe Biden or a Democrat from winning this next election, which is music to the dictators and authoritarians of the world. Authoritarian leaders like Vladimir Putin do not have to worry about re-election campaigns. Putin is in one right now, but his main opponent is in jail. He will remain in power for as long as he wants, which means he and Xi Jinping, and Ayatollah Khamenei, and Kim Jong-un can just wait it out until Joe Biden is out of office and the world's democracies are no longer united, or until the United States is once again led by a president who talks about leaving NATO, who admires authoritarian leaders, who does not care about protecting democracies like Ukraine. A president who famously withheld military aid for Ukraine until it agreed to dig up dirt on his domestic political rival. A second Trump presidency that would be a threat to democracy here at home, but also around the world.